Hi there, welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Patricia. Patricia says, in Being Human on page 73, you say, you can purposely focus your awareness and experience on what feels like deliberate thinking about a particular topic, but those thoughts still originate somewhere. And from what I can tell, it's not from anything you do. I love that I wrote this in Being Human. I don't remember that at all. Um, But (laughs) I don't know. It's something that still to this day feels so fresh and new and alive and that I talk about a lot now that this stuff just arises and that there is no me in here making it all happen. And so um, although I, I'm pretty sure it looks different today than it did, um, how many years ago would that have been? A lot. Like, I don't know when I wrote Being Human 10 years ago, at least. Uh, I just I just think it's really cool that it made its way there. Like it was a, you know, and it kind of speaks to what we talk about here. It was, it was an idea that came through. It was a thought that was showing up even back then that maybe didn't mean that much to me. Maybe it did. I don't remember how that looked, but but that has continued to kind of deepen and simplify over the years. And when people talk about being in this conversation and in this exploration for a long time, I think that's how it goes. It's not that there's all this new stuff that comes in. Well, I mean, it may be, there is new stuff that can come in, but there's a, there's a real simplicity and depth that starts to happen where it's like, something was something kind of rang true or resonated on a fuzzy in a fuzzy kind of way maybe at one point and then it just solidifies and deepens and we get to see more and more about it I just think that's the coolest process okay so let me get back to Patricia's question so she gave that quote and then she says my question is if it's not from anything we do so if our thinking is not coming from anything we do is there a way to receive smart thoughts she says How can I give myself a break when I'm in the habit of thinking that my thoughts are dumb? Thank you so much for your work and for sharing your insights. And then she says, P.S. Being human is my Bible. Oh, thanks. Um, Okay, so this is such a fascinating question. So if thoughts just arising, we aren't making it happen, including Patricia, your thought, the thoughts that show up over there that say your thoughts are so dumb why don't you ever think anything new or fresh or smarter or whatever that's the same right that's also just arising um but i hear you asking you know how how does this stuff get wiser like and it's such a good question that i think so many of us have kind of wondered in in one way or another and it's hard to explain but i'm going to try I think there's a paradox in here about about looking beyond thought. And I, I don't even mean to say it that way because I don't want to make it sound like thought is bad or wrong or that we should be purposely dismissing it or ignoring it because I don't think we should at all. It is It is what's arising. Anything that's arising is what's arising to be seen. So wonderful. It's beautiful. Most humans think, all humans think sometimes. Most humans think a lot of the time. So it just is what it is. But I think there's something in seeing that that most thought is not particularly smart in the sense that, or wise, we should say. Thought is pretty much always smart because it's our mind trying to keep us safe and repeat things and give us a sense of familiarity, and give us a sense of safety. So in that way, most of the thinking that most of us have most of the time is repetitive, completely not fresh at all, not necessary in that moment. Uh, It's soothe. it it helps us, we get kind of identified with it, and we start to feel soothed by it. Again, it feels familiar. It feels like it gives us a sense of control when our mind is planning, and thinking, and thinking ahead, and all of that. We have this calm, nice, like, oh, okay, I I got things under control here. I know what's going on. So I want you to think of it that way, that let's, I'm making this up, but let's just say most of the time, 98% of the thoughts that show up are of that nature. They're nothing that need, need anything. They don't require anything of you. They aren't particularly helpful. They aren't true. No thought is the truth ever. 
it's their their thoughts almost always about the past or the future, probably always about the past or the future. They're often kind of just thinking about other thoughts. So you know that feeling, your mind gets going and then more thoughts come in about those thoughts, about those thoughts. It gets so far removed from anything true or real or smart or wise even that it, you just kind of want to get that sense of it. Like, okay, this is happening. It's fine. It's wonderful. It's because of this amazing design where our mind is trying to protect us, right? But there's nothing in this that I need. There's nothing in this that's actually helpful or actually really all that smart. And that's true for all of us, Patricia, not just you. It's because of the nature of thought that it's kind of like that. So it's a great question. Like, how can I get thoughts that are um, smarter and more helpful? But, but rather than ask that question, here's what I want you to consider. How can you just let thought be exactly what it is and see that it is just serving its purpose? It's just doing what it needs to do and just not worry about it quite so much, but know that that there's all kinds of smartness from beyond that. So it's not about jumping into thought and trying to make it better. It's more, there's more value, I think, or, or you know, look in this direction anyway, definitely more newness and, and more potential in seeing that thought's just doing what thought's doing, but it doesn't really matter so much whether it's smart or dumb by our standards, which would just be from more thought. There's there's all of the intelligence of the entire multiverses is is there behind all of this. It's there beyond all the chatter and the content of of what your mind is churning out. So it kind of, in a sense, want you don't hold this too tightly, but kind of want you to just put all thought in the same bucket anyway. It doesn't matter if it's smart or dumb or repetitive or not repetitive. It's not leading us through life. It's not doing anything for us the way that it will claim to be doing stuff for us. We're lived by life. That's where I want you to look, Patricia. Look to beyond thought. Look to what's there while thought is happening, but what else is there? And when thought isn't happening, what's there? That's a really great question. What's happening when my smart thoughts fall away and my dumb thoughts fall away? What's What never changes? What's always there? look more in that direction. And ironically, this is the weird paradox. Ironically, as we start to kind of see thought for what it is and know it's just, there's no truth to any of it ever. And it's, it just, you know, we really don't need it the way we think we do. That's when, again, I'm very much generalizing here, but it tends to slow down. And what shows up tends to feel smarter. Like it kind of just comes up. It's not just repeating the same stories in the same way and thought about thought about thought about thought in quite the same way. It's not running you off into some major past or major future story in quite the same way. It's like when there's a space and there's not so much thinking or we're just not that attuned to it because we're we're in this this bigger awareness from beyond thinking, thought somehow tends to feel a little smarter. What does show up and what does grab your attention might be like, oh, well, that's good. That makes sense. But it's hard to know. And I think that's always here. All that smart thought is always here. But it's hard to notice it when it's lost in an ocean of a bunch of repetitive, not smart thought. So I hope that makes sense. There's so much coming up. But again, like, see how you're lived. See how... See how all of this thought stuff, and just hold this as a what if, just play with it yourself. What if thought is not really necessary for anything? That's pretty extreme for most people, but really consider that. What if none of it's necessary? How, how would you be with it then? You might not be wondering or caring so much about getting a smart one versus a dumb one. You might just be like, oh my gosh, it's not necessary at all. And that points you in a very different direction. Then again, what comes up, tends to tends to be of a little bit different quality because it's not just all the same repetitive stuff over and over again that we're that we're globbing onto as if we need it. Hope that helps. Thank you so much, Patricia, for sending the question. Send your questions to ask Amy at the little school of big And I'll be back here on Mondays to speak to them. Thanks everyone. Have a great week.